Hello there, ladies and gents. I um, just want to dive in with a really quick thing today, showing you the initial audios IALA1, which is kind of like uh, an LA2A compressor style, but with some total harmonic distortion in there. And, and there's some nifty things that you can do with that. Generally, I'll use this style of compression on things like strings or a slow vocal. And in this case, I'm trying to get lots of vocal layers to gel together. Now, in the main drop, I've got everything working all right. It, not fully mixed, but it sounds like this. And that's working pretty well. And with all the elements going on, it gels together and works pretty well. However, there's another section where there's a lot less going on and we're not getting the right kind of effect. Okay, so you kind of just like hear all these extra bit of vocals come in and they don't gel together. But this is where you can use something like this just to bring them all together. They distort them all at the same time as well, which should bring it all together and make it feel like this big swell of vocals rather than all these layers jumping on top of each other. So this works very, very simply. You've got a threshold, you've got makeup gain. Over on the left hand side, we've got an input gain if we need to adjust it. And then we've got our THD. We can also switch between the compress or limit options. So what we need to do first is just listen back and dial in this compression threshold. So I've got these separate vocals in a bus like so. I I never thought that I would be caught in your trap, baby. Okay, so what we've done here is just pushed up the threshold, which actually brings it down. It's brought it down minus 14.87. We can see our compression ratio in the middle here. It's taking probably only about 3 dB out altogether now. I never thought that I would be caught in Baby. When the layers come in, that's helping it gel a little bit more together. Now, makeup game wise, I think we only going to need to add about two and a half back. Uh, at its peak, it's taking three out, but overall, it's going to be slightly louder. So we don't need to give it its full gain back. I never thought that I would be. In fact, two dB sounds like it'd be enough. Let's just check it in context. I Okay, and there's something else it's still you can still feel it kind of build up and grow with these extra layers um i want it to really thicken up a bit more so we're going to use the total harmonic distortion basically just adds extra harmonics but it does it in a pretty musical way so if we slam it all the way to 100 percent, it's going to be way too much but we can do that and dial it back and whatever starts to sound good i take usually about 10 percent back from that I I never thought that I would be caught in your trap, baby. I never thought that I would be caught in your trap, baby. I never thought that I would be caught in your trap, baby. I never thought that I would be caught in your trap, baby. That's all right there, just nearly 3%, and it's just helping everything glue together a bit more. So let's just have it disabled. We'll try it in context, and then we'll bring the IALA1 back in and see if it's helped us. Wait a minute, this 
definitely helped the vocal stick together a bit more and just stand out in that space. That's just one simple use. On something like strings, you can always get that nice ebb and flow and the harmonic distortion just helps those different layers stick together by adding those extra harmonics across the whole channel on a bus. Just a little something I thought I'd show you and a way that I approach certain things like this. Like I'm not going to mix all my vocals in one batch. I put them on different buses for different elements. They're going to need treating differently at different parts of the mix. Hope the video was helpful for you guys and I look forward to seeing you on the next one.